Now, some of you who are here today are not going to be familiar with the coverage I've done uh, in the last couple of weeks. But for, uh, for those of you who have seen, you will know that I have had a lot to say about, um, uh, I've had a lot to say about Hassan Piker, uh, the, at the moment, largest left-leaning, uh, streamer in the world, okay? And personally, I think that Hassan's coverage of this event has been quite literally trash, okay? Quite, quite trash. Uh, in fact, I think it's been, uh, denounceably trash. Uh, we all remember, of course, the, uh, famous moment in which Hassan screamed at his chat, GET BACK TO ME WHEN VLADIMIR PUTIN IS PUTTING UKRAINIANS IN CONCENTRATION CAMPS! You guys, uh, you guys remember that moment, right? That was a super, super, really cool moment where the definitely not losing his shit streamer decided to scream about innocent people being put into concentration camps. Um, and, you know, as it turns out, as it turns out, he hasn't really stopped. So, Hassan has been very angry about people clipping his channel lately and responding to it. And it's funny because, remember, this is the guy who called JXE a Nazi and a harasser and a psychopath over making very light fun of Hassan's, um tendency to watch people's videos while he's taking a shit. Um, and it just seems to me like Hassan is losing his motherfucking shit. It, it's terrible. Hassan, Hassan's coverage is straight up, uh, incoherent. But let's take a listen. Let's take a listen to what he's had to say over the last couple of days, shall I've we? I've been noticing it's been hella toxic. Even clip channels are being annoying and commenting in the description on how you're wrong. Why are they clipping me then? Like, if my own fucking clip channels are clipping all of my videos to make money, why are you fucking clipping wrong information then? If that's the case. And then fuck you, dude. Don't make me DMCA your bitch asses. I will destroy the Hasanabi Clips industrial complex. I have- I will make what Russia is doing to Ukraine look like little kisses to the Hasanabi Clips industrial complex. Do you understand me? Motherfuckers are literally posting my YouTube videos uh, from my fucking Twitch, stealing this shit because I allow them to so they can make money off of it just to make me look fucking bad or shit on me? What the fuck is this? I'm going to look this up. I didn't even know. I haven't been on YouTube for a long time. Well done, Pansama. Well done. Well done. So, <sighs> wow. Um, Hassan has completely lost his mind over the last two months, hasn't he? Now, you know, I don't like to be the joke police. I get it. There's a lot of people making edgy jokes here and there. Dark humor is, uh, dark humor is, is, is the name of the game in a world as dark as ours. But the thing about dark humor is that usually it's self-referential you know, talking about the, the grimness of the plight that you're in. And it's not making fun of the people who are getting killed. It's not saying, haha, I'm going to make the, the ongoing mass murder of Ukrainian citizens look like nothing. I, I find his latest behavior on this shit to be genuinely, uh, fucking offensive and stupid. Like, I don't know how you can just sit there and think that's a good joke to make after you just made another joke about, about not giving a shit about people in Ukraine dying, um, because, unless there's a, unless there's fucking concentration camps. I just, I don't find any of this to be funny, humorous, or interesting, or good, for that matter. So, I don't know, guys. I, I, I can't help but feel like this issue has been very educational 
for the vast majority of us. Um, I think that we've now seen uh, with all of our eyes in very, 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 um, you know, in very, very uh, public form. Um, oh, is this a backup? Is this a, oh, this is a backup of the, uh, of the clip, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, it, I think we're seeing in, in clear and public form what people actually think about a lot of issues. And it appears to me that what Hassan Piker thinks is that because Russia used to be USSR, that it's okay to downplay and joke about and make fun of the mass death of innocent people in Ukraine. And I really think that's shit. I think that's fucking shit. There's not much else I can shit I can say about that. I unironically feel like that should be something that we draw lines on. You know? Here, let me just for those of you who haven't seen the other clip, I believe this is the other clip we were looking for. Let's play this one here. What's up, folks? I'm oh, hey, here we go. Wait a minute. This is a compilation. In fact, let's watch the compilation and let's see if it was, uh, let's see if this, uh, if this compilation, um, reveals anything. Okay. Let's, let's keep an eye. Let's, this is a great, this is a great little compilation. We got what? We got a whole five minutes here. Let's watch through it. Okay, everybody. Let's see what we got. Live and alive. And we got a lot to talk about. I was right about Ukraine. That's right. War is not imminent. Oh, shocked. Shocked. Take a look at that date, 2.15, everybody. Find out. Anyway, we're going to talk about that and a bunch of other stuff, so get in now. Possibly a new React series as well, so you don't want to miss it. I think maybe I'll tell my editors to do this, but I think I'll just change, like, I'll change this every day to Ukraine is still has still not been invaded by Russia every day to, to make sure the... Uh, to make sure that the wishes of these fucking weirdo like I'm actually a sock them and you're a fucking tanky uh, idiots on the internet will yeah change it to Russia still has yet to invade Ukraine and it's like day this is on the 18th at this point you know what I mean time and time again that I don't think there is war that is going to happen because it would fucking destroy Russia and I still believe that I still believe that okay you care more about being like, yo, Hasanabi, you were fucking wrong. I hope you Austin all get dra uh, drafted, dude. Wait, hey. Oh. I hope you get... F Even his friend there is like, bro, what the fuck, man? His friend here, I don't know who this guy is. His friend's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Fucking drafted. Wait, are we going to war? I, I thought no, we but I hope they fucking drop your bitch ass, your fucking pasty little bitch ass into fucking uh, Luhensk, okay? To defend Ukrainian sovereignty and its fucking borders, you dipshit. I don't want Ukrainians to fucking Austin, die. You are a bottom. Okay? But you can't. So what's wrong with NATO expansion if majority population voted in favor? Would that mean NATO expansion is justified? In that circumstance, NATO is 1,000% an aggressor outside Only fucking force. Okay? Not Russia is not. Russia annexing its own fucking territory. Russia annexing its own fucking territory. Yes. that it's had that its own territory full of its own fucking people is not the same as nato being like we're gonna turn your country into a fucking base and put literal fucking military bases and and rockets into your country Hi. throw the question marks all you want i don't give a fuck about the ukrainian constitution i don't give a fuck about the ukrainian like border sovereignty that some of you dumbasses are fucking talking about like <laughs> retcon 404 says austin sitting next to him looks like the, the 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 clip of mike myers and kanye oh my fucking god it's literally the mike Me myers kanye the most tragic loss you're, of all you're like a three percenter about okay? black people it's so Here we go. stupid crimea is not the same as Kiev, please cover crimea is not the same you're you're like a three percenter about for ukraine okay it's so we go. stupid crimea is not the same as kiev however crimea is not the same as the rest of ukraine however eastern ukrainian territories have a lot of fucking russian people living in them because ukraine and and just like crimea and much of the rest of the fucking country was a part of russia was a part of the ussr until not that long ago okay the ussr doesn't exist anymore People's parents were alive back then. It so doesn't exist! A lot of fucking rich people. Oh my god! It doesn't fucking exist! It hasn't existed in fucking 30 years! People living there. So if you have ever, but like, you 
feeling bad about the Crimean annexation. I'm so sorry. Much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to scream so much, but how can you be so stupid? That is just a level of misinfor- it's, it's Republican levels of misinformation. Holy fuck. Change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable fucking act by the Russian government, okay? Can you give us the lowdown on NATO expansion? We'll talk about that in just a minute. So that's it. That's fine. And Hitler invaded countries based on Germanic ties at first. Yeah, dude. Talk to me when he's fucking throwing Ukrainians in a, in a, in a fucking... What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? Hit Ooh, let's play that one back. Can we play that one back real quick? Let's play that one back, DJ. Let's do it. What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? Hitler wasn't fucking bad because he decided to invade Austria. He was bad because he was fucking killing Jews, okay? That was the problem. He wasn't like, he wasn't like, oh yeah, we're gonna fucking annex territory with like Germanic people in it. That wasn't the main problem with Hitler, I think. That was like maybe eighth down the line. Like, I am further, uh, I am more critical as of now, I am more critical of the Russian actions of yesterday than the American government is, okay? Just understand that. I am more critical of the uh, the actions that took place yesterday than the American government is. The American totally, government bro. that was agitating for war and said, you know, banging the war drums, banging the war drums, banging the war drums, literally non-fucking stop, saying like Russia is going to murder babies, they're going to eat babies in they already are inside of kiev Am they're I ready to now? eat babies they have a thirst for blood they have a thirst for blood turns out they have a thirst for blood those motherfuckers have now turned around and been like okay well you know maybe this is not an invasion because technically they invaded eight years ago so maybe it's not an invasion no this is a legitimized like this is the the actual you, legitimate for being here the actual legitimate fucking uh uh, invasion in comparison to the past eight years of like look like Tim Pool after that 49 state landslide yeah I would look like Tim Pool after that 49 state landslide L if you know there was a bombing active bombing currently happening on Kiev and like Ukrainians were being murdered left and right at this this was on the day that the invasion began by the way just so you know on the day the invasion began this moment I would, I would be that way if America was like, we're, we're going with a full-throated, this is a full-blown invasion, and yet it hasn't happened. I have, at this point, I have a more aggressive stance on uh, Russian troops inside of Ukrainian borders than the American State Department does. Welcome, back. So how do you pair up with that? Yeah, Bro, America's literally like, they're, they're doing a fucking W tour. They're like, yo, we're going to predict a misinformation yeah, to false flag. Dude, okay, solve it. Solve the problem. Here what the fuck are they going to do? Are they going to go in? Are they going to fight back? Are they going to like, actually this is fly uh, the planes into Ukraine? Are they going to send the in the 6,000 troops at the fucking border of Ukraine? Non-believers like you was on? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they got this one this fucking... It, it, it got this, they got this one, the okay? At this point, if you are in a position of fucking power, you had every opportunity to fucking exhaust this... Exhaust said, diplomacy. Instead of fucking endlessly being like, this is a war that's gonna happen, this is a war that's gonna happen. Okay, then fucking try to solve it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna second guess what, yeah. what Mr. I have, is gonna yes. do next. Uh, well, um, that we know he's doing now and, and you know. You could just take Twitter the L feed, Ukraine. Wait, media. no, that's not what I'm saying. America has already delivered the L to Ukraine, okay? That's not what I'm saying at all. What? I'm saying America needs to fucking take the L. You want me to debate Hassan? I would gladly. I would gladly talk to Hassan, but the thing is, Hassan doesn't talk to anybody. Hassan doesn't talk to anyone because Hassan does his own fucking thing and always has. So you know what? You all get to be the ones. Here's the wild shit. Here's the wild shit. We all get to sit here with my lovely 450 viewers, which is poggers, but our tiny bundle of 450 well-informed imps have to cope with the fact that Hassan has been belching out Russian disinformation to 120,000 viewers while threatening and while making jokes at the expense of Ukrainian innocence. Yeah, we all just got to kind of cope with that, don't we? Kind of sucks, doesn't it? Sucks the state, the state of things suck. Uh, 
<sighs> oh well. You know. Why do people who have never experienced war or have been affected by it say shit like that? Uh, in the case of Hassan, it's because he's a highly confident idiot. It's Dunning-Kruger. He, he is not competent on his takes. He literally hasn't realized that the USSR does not and ha exist and has not existed. But he is used to people telling him he's a very smart boy. And he's also very rich. And when you're rich, you get this idea that, you know, you must deserve it. And so... He thinks he's a lot smarter than he is. He has, yeah, he has, he needs to have a little privilege check. He needs to have a little sit down and think about things for a while. Hassan has built himself into an ivory tower, and we have a great view of him struggling through dealing with real world politics over his lukewarm anti capitalist takes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be good if he just, I mean, but the thing is, it's not, this is the thing that's most annoying about this is the fact that he, that is, the, is that there's no excuse for it. It would not be hard to become mildly informed, even just knowing that the USSR doesn't and hasn't exist, existed in 30 years, even knowing a single thing about the history of Vladimir Putin and how Vladimir Putin has, has been and is a capitalist oligarch cutthroat criminal. And the criminal part is the most based part. And when I say criminal, by the way, I mean that he runs his government like a mafia. <sighs> Would you mind me explaining why Hassan is wrong? Yes, we are now going to do a very brief summary, okay? All right, everybody, it's time for us to focus and we're going to talk about why Hassan is wrong, okay? Why all of the people who are defending Russia are wrong okay so it's going to be very easy for me to do this but i'll need you to listen very closely and from here on out if you are making a claim as we are doing war coverage you must provide a source or you will be muted and or banned if we think it's malicious if you provide misinformation you will be banned okay it is very difficult to keep up with accurate information when covering live events. So we put this rule into place so that we can actually cover live events without wasting lots of time. Okay. Now, let us talk first about why the Russian perspective is wrong. Okay. Okay. So let us start very quickly with the facts of the situation. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little I'm going to do a little thing here, okay? We're going to do it live. We're going to open up a little notepad here, get a nice fresh note, and I'm going to show you. We're going to type it up together. It's going to be sick as fuck, okay? Watch this. Boom. Here we go. One. Hold on. We got to zoom out. That's a little too much. Here we go. Part one. Facts of invasion. Russia announced... Special military operations, which includes Wait, we have to move this so that we can actually see all of it. We'll go a little smaller here. Boop. There we go. Which includes ground forces, artillery, barrage, and airstrikes all across the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of Ukraine. Okay? So, Russia announced special military operations across, uh, but yes, across all of Ukraine, but specifically across the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Now, the fact is, this is unequivocally Equivocally, that's not the right word. Uh, Non-equivocally, this is unequivocally an invasion. And targets have been, and, and civilian and military structures have been hit all across Ukraine. Including in Kiev and Lviv, okay? Unequivocally unequivocally i don't know if i spelled it cor correctly unequivocally means no there can be no doubt about it okay 
There is no possible way that you can frame. Um, there is no possible way that you can frame the special military operations as anything other than an invasion. They are an invasion. Now, the Russian justification for this. So, Russian justification. Demilitarization. Denazification. And restoration of rightful borders. Okay? So... This is their justification. This has come directly from a speech that Putin gave on Wednesday, okay? Demilitarization, denazification, and the restoration of Russians' rightful borders. Now, Putin has played very fast and loose. Um, uh, it has played very fast and loose with what he means by when he's talking about restoring rightful borders. He has talked of the rightful borders going as far as the original Russian Empire. By the way, the original Russian Empire includes countries that now belong to NATO, okay? So that is a huge and dangerous claim. Okay, so this has been the Russian justification. The facts that we have is that they announced a, a special military operations, which includes ground force artillery barrages and airstrikes all across the Donetsk, Donetsk and Luhansk regions. It's unequivocally an invasion. And of course, we've seen hits out, outside. Hundreds of casualties confirmed on Ukrainian side. Um, unconfirmed casualties on russia side we are not sure what the casualties are looking like on russian side to date russia has denied that the ukraine has shot down that ukraine that the ukrainian soldiers have shot down russian aircraft but independent sources say otherwise so it does appear that um it does appear that that's the case okay Yes, I have heard. Yes, this is another one. So we do have, we will talk about some of these individual incidences, okay? Um, so this is, this is the situation. Now, there's another justification that Russia has said, which is liberation and protection of People's Republic of Donetsk and Luhansk. I think I'm saying this correct. Luhansk. I apologize for any pronunciation or spelling errors. I apologize. Okay? So these are the two justifications. Okay? I've added on here that there were numerous open public attempts at de-escalation from Ukraine. Ukraine, in the days leading up to invasion, literally went as far as to beg Russia for a uh, diplomatic solution. But following uh, the firing of missiles from Russia into Ukraine, Ukraine decided, uh, Ukraine uh, announced that they would not be yielding to Russian claims. They would not be yielding that territory of Luhansk and Donetsk to Russians. Um, in fact, there have been some, uh, can I put, I can put chat under the cam. Yeah, I could. That works. That does work. I can do that too. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll put chat over here for now. Okay. There was numerous calls from uh, from the president of Ukraine. Um, this includes UN attempts at UN peacemaking um, meetings summit with UN Security Council. There was three of these, three or four of these already. Um, the the summit of the UN Security Council, personal direct diplomacy with Putin, etc. <clears throat> so, we have seen that there were numerous attempts at de-escalation. Now, the Russian justification is demilitarization, denazification, and the restoration of rightful borders. Now... Let us go over counters to, or, or let's say issues with Russian justification and narrative, okay? 
first, USSR no longer exists. This is a huge one. The USSR no longer exists. The USSR has not officially existed since 1991, which is when USSR officially, officially ceased existing. Okay? Now, there are a lot of treaties and deals and things like that that were, uh, that were handled, um, as the, uh, during the fall of the USSR. However, what Vladimir Putin used as justification in his speech that he gave pre the invasion during his announcement of war, during the announcement of his invasion, the justification he used was that because Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, had originally created, and by created, I mean drawn out the borders of the Soviet, the former Soviet state of Ukraine, that that meant that the modern Russian Federation has a claim, according to Putin, to this land. Of course, that is insane. That is an insane claim. That is literally like saying that if Britain invaded the United States tomorrow and said, well, you used to belong to us, we want you back again. It is an absurd claim, okay? The USSR no longer exists. So any argument that comes from the position that the, that Ukraine once belonged to Russia, that does not matter. What we are talking about is uh, decades of history bygone, okay? Decades of history bygone. And yes, keep in mind that there is a whole lot of um there's been a whole lot of saying that like oh well ukraine doesn't actually exist as a people they're just russians and that is bullshit okay okay that is that is absolutely terrible justification okay that is a a, a horrific argument ukrainians are actually russians bullshit uh, imperial nations don't get to decide who people are. You don't get to decide that. That is incredibly fucked, okay? Uh, and yes, it is that simple as saying that is bullshit. The idea that a, that a nation can declare you, uh, rightfully belonging to them is an insane claim. It is blood and soil propaganda. Yes, I will put that on there. Blood and soil, ultra-nationalist, fascist propaganda. It is literally fascist propaganda. This, this part right here, the idea that Ukrainians are actually Russians, is fascist propaganda. Okay? So, there's another part of this. Liberation and protection of people's republics. These people's republics, these so-called people's republics, have major issues with legitimacy. First off, they were heavily funded and directly tied to Russian government powers, okay? So you have to be very careful about this. There is a lot of discussion to be had about sovereignty. There are all kinds of discussions to, set, to talk about liberatory forms of nationalism. I have a lot of problems with that term, but... I think an argument can be made that some people, like, for example, Irish republicanism, uh, Irish socialism, is a, a nationalist struggle that does not have to do with supremacy, but instead it focuses on claiming for themselves a, na a new national identity. Now, I still have problems with all forms of, um, of nationalism. However, uh, what we are talking about here 
is not a national is not a, a, a um is not a nationalist movement of that sort. Instead, what we have are pro Russia, as in pro Russian state groups within Ukraine that are currently being funded, actively funded by Russia, and those groups which have direct ties to Russia have declared independence, regardless of what all of the other people in the area want or care about. So that is really, that is a huge undermining of legitimacy, okay? Massive, fucking massive undermining of legitimacy, okay? So, that's the first problem. So they have major issues with legitimacy. First off, they're heavily funded, directly tied to Russian government powers. Secondly, separatists are freak are often, not all of them, but many of them are directly um are often explicitly um uh created with the goal of rejoining Russia. So as you can see, more blood and soil. Okay? So what we're seeing here uh, is that these separatist groups, not only are they funded directly uh, and directly tied, but they're not actually a separatist group. They are a group that is explicitly created with the goal of rejoining Russia, which is a very different struggle than say a a uh, a group of rebels that wish to have autonomy uh, autonomy in their area that they wish to have control over their own area no these are groups that explicitly are in favor of the neighboring country's government okay it's very very different and that is the reason why this argument of the liberation and protection of the people's republics is bullshit also third No evidence of significant threat to so-called people's republics. Okay? These people's republics, uh, there has been no evidence that these the people of these people's republics were being genocided, were being rounded up. However... Interestingly, Russia has forced formerly formerly Ukrainian citizens into conscription. There is video evidence of Russia forcing what they call formerly Ukrainian people into conscription, which is a war crime, by the way. A that alone is a war crime, okay? And we already have evidence that that's the case. Extensive evidence that that's the case. <clears throat> Let me answer that question. I say this in as good faith as possible. I love you in this community. Can I just say that Hassan hasn't really simped for Russia? He calls this an invasion and calls out their propaganda. Sure, he was wrong, but no one thought Russia would do this, majority report included. It's hard for old school anti imperialist leftists such as myself to accept NATO Western chauvinism as being better than Russian oligarchy. Like, don't they both engage in propaganda and war crimes? Yes, but that doesn't matter because we're not here to defend and, and, uh, and, praise NATO. NATO didn't invade another country. No Western nation invaded Ukraine. Russia chose to invade Ukraine. And secondly, I disagree when you say that Hassan, Hassan has not simped for Russia. I think that if you're downplaying and making jokes at the expense of Ukrainian people, you're downplaying the value of Ukrainian life, and you're taking time to uh, downplay the open threats, the very obvious threats that Russia was making, the very obvious moves that Russia was making, and you downplayed that, that is simping for Russia. One other thing. Uh, he was wrong, but no one thought Russia would do this, majority report included. I did. I thought. I thought Russia would do this. Vosh thought Russia would do this. A fuckload of anarchists on the internet have been war on the internet have been warning about Russia doing just this. So quite a lot of people, quite a lot of people, do and did see this coming. A lot of us did. 
It's not my fault that Hassan Majority Report, who I love, by the way, I fucking love Sam Cedar, but these guys pal around with a bunch of people who are constantly doing apologia for Russia, as if it's the USSR, as if it's a socialist or communist nation, when it's not. It is. So I'm not trying to be mad at you or anything. I'm not going to ban you or anything like that. But I just, I really want people to think a little harder about this because the reality is a lot of us have seen this coming for a long time. Those of us who haven't had our heads buried in the dirt and who've realized what Vladimir, who Vladimir Putin is, which is that he is a fucking fascist who uses blood and soil um, uh, rhetoric constantly. And Hassan is still doing it. That clip was from yesterday of him joking again about Ukrainians dying again. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that Puerto Rican musician. There is a... There, so this is where we get to the next part, okay? Let me continue what I'm doing with this roundup and with this justification, okay? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So here we have issues with Russian justification. First of all, the USSR no longer exists. So making claims based on what the USSR used to hold, uh, at what land the USSR used to hold, is on its face ridiculous. Secondly, Ukrainians are actually Russians, and I should add slash Ukraine is actually Russian soil. Bullshit. Imperial nations don't get to decide who people are. Uh, blood and soil op ultranationalist fascist propaganda. Uh, people have a right to be independent from imperial power and... Ukraine has existed for some time post, during, and post fall of the USSR. So this is not like a country that just sprung up out of nowhere. The Ukraine already had the right to exist under the USSR. And now they're just saying, well, no, now you don't have it at all because... We're the government that took over from the USSR. And yes, of course, Ukrainian is a separate language. That's another thing we can put on here. Ukrainian is a separate language from Russian. Ethnic, uh, ethnic differences already existed. And only Russian nationalists refuse to respect those differences. Okay? So these are some of the arguments against the Ukrainian is uh, Ukrainians are actually Russians. Ukraine is actual actually Russian soil. Okay? Liberation and protection of people's republics. These so-called people's republics have huge legitimacy issues that anyone can see. Anyone who is not doing apologia for Russia can recognize that years of direct Russian funding of separatist groups leading to a leading to peacekeeping action on behalf of the groups that you paid to ca to cause trouble is a very obvious attempt to manufacture an invasion. That is so obvious. Yes, I am ruling out blood and soil arguments because blood and soil arguments are just fascist rhetoric. And I do not, on my, on, on its face, I reject blood and soil, that land is actually ours arguments. On its face. I do not think that just because you think that your nation owns land that you can take that land. I don't think any nation can do that. I don't think anybody can do that. Yes, exactly. This is this is actually that's actually great. Cutie Maya. It's like someone slapping sticky notes onto your ass and then saying that each of your ass cheeks is a new person and then saying that those new people consent even though you aren't, but that's because your ass cheeks are an independent nation. It's completely ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous on its face and very transparent. So, these are the main reasons why Hassan's arguments are bad as shit, okay? Almost everything that he claimed AKA uh, the USSR existing, first of all, stupid as fuck, monumentally stupid argument. Secondly, the idea that they're reclaiming Russian soil is literally fascist propaganda from Russian fascists, which Hassan has now repeated to 120,000 people, okay? And then third, 
the idea that that there's any validity to the liberation and protection of people's republics people's republics which interestingly despite being republics did not were created by executive action from the russian military not from any sort of democratic process isn't that fucking weird isn't that the weirdest part a people's republic that had no democratic process and that was created by a foreign military insane no democratic for the creation of a republic republics created by military decree from foreign russian military okay so yeah i love the auto parentheses okay it's very helpful yes russia has been trying to russia russify ukraine for at least 300 years yes and then also here's another argument oh yeah that's another argument which is that they putin was calling the elected ukrainian government a junta a military junta which uh guys that's ridiculous okay can we just talk about what a, what a junta actually is a junta is a government is a government that is completely led by the military it is basically when a military takes over okay it's a common word okay a military junta is a government led by a committee of military leaders it literally is when when the government takes over your country okay that's that's or when when sorry not when the government takes over when the military takes over the government of your country that is what a junta is okay so uh that's what was that was what was claimed by russia russia claimed that ukraine is is a the the currently democratically elected government of ukraine is a military junta which it is factually not okay now you might go well isn't there a lot of cor uh, corruption in ukraine isn't democracy kind of bullshit in general and we will go yes of course but that doesn't mean that you, that a an elected government even if there's some corruption involved even if it's imperfect that an elected government is a military junta it's not a military junta there is no way you can make that argument only an insane person or someone who is engaging in open propaganda to excuse their aggressive military action would engage in that so um and then there's another argument we're going to talk about okay this is the last argument we're going to talk about on this particular section okay which is right here i'm going to type this out this is going to be a big one nato expansionism here we go Na but nato expansion okay that's going to be a whole segment here okay but nato expansion now we need to talk about something does anybody know what nato actually is nato is a defensive military alliance the north atlantic treaty organization that's what that stands for north atlantic treaty organization it is a peace treaty and a defensive pact okay which means that the laws of the defensive pact state that uh that if any of the nations are attacked that all other member nations will work together to defend those other nations that are attacked okay now it's very complicated and there's a whole bunch of different things um that that there's a whole bunch of history to it and whatever okay but nato is on paper a defensive pact so one second i just want to bring up something very interesting okay okay let's just let's just real quick let me just see if we can bring this up okay let's find out i just want to get the exact facts on this okay one moment hold on hold on hold on
One second. I just want to make sure I'm finding the right spot here. So, NATO... <clears throat> NATO is not... Okay, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, okay? Ukraine has been going back and forth on NATO membership for some time. However, it has been, uh, as I understand, rejected multiple times in the past. Here we go. Popular opinion for NATO membership. As you can see, it has gone back and forth over the years. And recently, however, major polls have shown an increase in, in the Ukrainian people's desire to join NATO. Okay? However, n joining NATO is a significantly complicated process. Here we go. Request of guarantees of Ukraine's non-accession into NATO. Russia has been demanding that NATO never join, or that R Ukraine never joins NATO. However, NATO and, and Ukraine have had relations for some time. So, they were already rejected. Um, they were already rejected before. There has been an ongoing effort to try and work something out because, you know, clearly some political forces within Ukraine wish to join NATO. However, this idea of NATO expansion is simply not applicable here. Is there an argument to be made about the expansion of NATO as an anti-Russian force? Yes, there is an argument to be made there. After all, NATO was literally created to counter the USSR. That is where NATO came from. NATO was, oh my God, all of us are scared of Russia. And Russia, of course, had its own alliances. Russia had it had massive Soviet, um, massive Soviet alliances. They had no, a number of countries under their control that joined them. They had al alliances with China. They had alliances with Vietnam. They had all these kinds of different alliances. Every nation state engages in defensive alliances, and every nation state can use those defensive alliances in a less than defensive way. So for example, let's let's just think about a, a, an imaginary circumstance where you have a country and all of the countries around it all join the same defensive pact. That's a very dangerous position for that country to be in. However, this is not the case with Ukraine. This is not the case at all. In fact, the idea that that people speaking out against the invasion of Ukraine are are in favor of NATO expansionism is patently absurd because Ukraine is not a part of NATO and Ukraine was not em eminently a part of NATO. There is a long process still to go before Ukraine could even join NATO. So the idea that NATO expansionism is on the table here is absurd. It is non-applicable. Yes, are there times where NATO has engaged, has used the defensive properties of the pact? Have they used it as leverage? Absolutely. There have been many times where that's the case. But here, it doesn't apply because of the facts of the situation. And of course, as as Menesench as Menesench says, the only reason Pluto opposes NATO expansion is because it prevents Russian forces from invading those countries. That is somewhat true. However, you can also recognize. I think it's rational to acknowledge that. Um, wait, what did I say? Pluto? Oops, Putin. Um, it is it is it is possible to recognize why Russian uh, ally countries would be nervous about the growth of NATO. However, it doesn't apply here. It simply doesn't apply. It doesn't apply here. Oh, appreciate that, Puerto Rican musician. Um, it, does, it just doesn't apply. So there is not... A, this argument is, is silly. It's false premises. <sighs> Yeah, true, Hanubia.
So there's a lot going on here. But these arguments that have been put forward by Russia are deeply, deeply flawed. Okay? They are in, they are incredibly flawed. This is interesting. Look at this. Even in the even in the Wikipedia article for the enlargement of NATO, as of 2021, NATO officially recognizes three aspiring members, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Georgia and Ukraine. But they, these are aspiring members that have applied and been denied multiple times. So you can't claim that this is an example of NATO expansionism when they haven't approved any of these countries. NATO had the opportunity to expand and didn't. And didn't. They've, they have in other areas, but they didn't here. So it doesn't apply. It's an excuse. What you are witnessing is an excuse for imperial action. So, now that we've taken some time to go through these, I hope that was a satisfactory rundown as to why Hassan and many of the Russian apologist arguments do not apply. Does that make sense? I hope all of these make sense as to why these arguments are bad, why they're deeply flawed, and why they add support to the Russian side of things, okay? Okay. So what we have and the rundown is Russia using fascist rhetoric is invading a neighboring country. They are annexing territory that they claim rightfully belongs to them using a very, very flimsy excuse of liberating two people's republics that were created by military action on the side of Russia not that those people, no democratic process occurred there. Just Russia declared militarily they exist. That is the situation. There is no excuse for this. There is no excusing this behavior. There is, this is, this is bl blind, just sheer, undeniable imperial aggression. There's no way around it. Hassan is mega cringe. He's been very mega cringe on this in the last few issues. Can you talk about the denazification claim slash the Azov battalion scapegoat? Yes. As it turns out, Ukraine has bad people in it. I know this might come as a surprise to some people, but every nation has bad people in it. Okay? A lot of them. A lot of good people and a lot of bad people. Uh, there is, in fact, a large amount of right-wingers in Ukraine. Oh, my God. Just like there are a fuckload of right-wingers in the United States and a fuckload of right-wingers in Russia, including the fascist in charge, a open fascist who is using blood and soil hyper-fascist rhetoric to justify an invasion. The Azov Battalion has a few hundred members and while it is a repugnant organization the idea that anyone would buy the existence of a bad battalion as a justification for a war that will kill thousands of civilians is frankly an idiot and there's no other way to put that around you are having a failure in calculation and a failure in judgment if you think the existence of a single gang, whether it is whether it is approved by the government or not, it does not matter. If you think that a single gang justifies another imperial fascist nation taking over, you are just not thinking hard enough. 